Let's look at how we can apply conservation of mass to a practical system so that we can solve some practical problems. Some fluid, let's say water, is flowing in this pipe from location one to location two, and there's a balloon attached to the pipe. So that if there's a difference in mass flow between these two locations, that balloon could be expanding out like this. We'd like to apply conservation of mass to figure out how much that balloon is going to expand. This could be similar to uh, a problem where you have a tank that's filling as well. The key is to draw our control volume in a way that makes it easy for us to formulate the problem. So let's make sure that our control volume boundaries are perpendicular to the flow direction going through the pipe. That makes our lives easier. And let's likewise draw our control volume boundaries so that they're just outside the balloon so that our control volume expands with the balloon. And I'll complete the control volume down here. So now we've got stuff being stored inside the control volume based on the difference between what comes in at location one and what goes out at location two. And the question we might ask is, how does the balloon change size? We can apply conservation of mass. We can look at the change of the mass contained in the control volume must be equal to, and in this case we can use just a summation over the inlet and the outlet. Summation of all of the volume flows in VA, where this is a V, average velocity perpendicular to the surface area, times delta T for how long we allowed the flow to continue. So the change in mass and the control volume depends on the difference between flows in and flows out. So this is the sum over all the flows in, and it'll just be negative if the flow goes out, times the delta T over which we've observed it. Or delta MCV over delta T equal to rho 1 V1 A1 minus rho 2 V2 A2. So these are the inlets and the outlets. And this is negative because we're interested in summing over all the uh, flows going in. Turning this to a derivative, dm dt equal to rho 1 v1 a1 minus rho 2 v2 a2. And the mass that we're interested in is the sum of the mass of the pipe or the fluid contained in the pipe plus the mass of the fluid contained in the balloon. Rate of change with time of density times volume within the pipe. That's the mass in the pipe. Plus density times volume in the balloon. That's the total mass within the balloon. Must be equal to rho 1 V1 A1 minus rho 2 V2. A2. So we haven't assumed constant density yet, but the volume in the pipe, assuming this is a rigid pipe or close to a rigid pipe, is a constant. So all of the difference between the inflow and the outflow shows up as a change in the volume of the balloon. And we'll assume density is constant, which is a pretty safe bet through most of this course we'll wind up with the rate of change of volume with time for the balloon equal to V1 A1 minus V2 A2. Or for no change in the balloon dimensions or no balloon at all, V1 A1 equal to V2 A2. So to conserve mass in a system, draw your control volume and draw it in a way so that the velocities of interest are perpendicular to the surfaces of the control volume. And it'll be a straightforward matter of matching up the amount of flow going in and out. If the densities are constant, it'll just be V1A1 equal to V2A2. Or if there are multiple inlets and outlets, then you'll have to account for 
multiple inflows and outflows. So conserving mass in this course is mostly going to come down to balancing the volume flows in a steady flow to make sure that they match up.